Hello, everyone. This is Shane Mollica with Pixius Fitness, and welcome back for another episode. Um, the first two episodes, again, just rehashing that just real quick, that the first one is just how to get started, how, how to get your equipment together, or if you decide to go to a gym, you know, kind of figuring that out. Last week's episode went more into setting your own goals in terms of are you looking uh, to gain more uh, power, muscle hypertrophy, or muscular endurance. Today, we're actually going to get started uh, with something to consider for one of the particular muscle groups, and might as well hit the one that all of the guys want to know about, and that's chest, all right? So when we look at the chest, just kind of going over quick anatomy here, you know, the uh, pectoralis muscle, you know, it's a pretty big muscle, obviously, across the chest, but uh, keep in mind that there are three particular areas to it, three different heads, if you will, the clavicular head, the sternal and the coastal. Now, certain um, exercises will work all three heads at once, but in order to target specific uh, portions of the pectoralis uh, major muscle, you do need to change your uh, shoulder position in order to put certain uh, muscles in more of a stretch position or relaxed position. And that's what we're gonna go over today is uh, three or four really basic exercises that you can use to help uh, stimulate uh, each of those heads of the uh, pectoralis muscles. Now, with these exercises, again, I know they seem very basic, but keep in mind, basic works. That's why they've been around forever, is because they do work. Today, I'm gonna be showing with uh, dumbbells. I'll do an episode later on going uh, more with the use of mobility bands and how you can utilize those to uh, work out the uh, chest musculature. So I think where we're gonna start off is very simple. Um, the standard flat bench press. Again, I'm gonna be using dumbbells. And then we'll uh, look at the incline bench press, decline, and then also depending on what your setup is, if you don't have a bench that can decline, the coffin press, which is another great um, exercise to have in your uh, toolbox. So let me uh, switch my position here a little bit. So standard bench press, again, I'm just gonna use dumbbells. The motion is essentially the same um, if you have a barbell and everything. Um, I always have preferred dumbbells um, for bench presses just because um, for me, for my shoulders, they tend to do a little better. When I uh, start doing bench presses on the, uh, with the barbells, I start getting kinks in the shoulder a little bit. I've had uh, personal trainers, certified strength and conditioning specialists, I've had other people analyze my motion and we've made tweaks to it. And no matter what, I get that kink in the shoulder um, that impingement type uh, feeling. So every time I go back to dumbbells, everything works out fine. I can still get a great workout. I've still been able to improve my strength, my size um, over the course of the years and everything. So remember resistance is resistance, whether it's mobility bands, barbells, dumbbells, pushing yourself to failure between your rep range, that's where you're gonna uh, get your benefits. So let's just start off with flat bench press here. So going back on the bench itself, getting myself positioned, uh, the dumbbells right over my chest uh, musculature, not over my face or over my head, bringing them down and out, keeping my elbows down. I don't want them too high. And then straight overhead. Now a good cadence to use is about two seconds down, pause for a moment, and then two seconds up. Using this type of cadence will prevent you from utilizing any type of excessive momentum which will keep you safe. And it also will keep those muscles under tension for a long period of time. And that's where you get the, uh, some of those benefits is that time under tension. All right, so bring them down to my chest and come on up. So again, simple bench press, uh, bringing, it, uh, bringing it down. It'll almost look like you're uh, pushing in a triangle type pattern with it, uh, with it coming down and then straight up over your chest area. All right, and again, remember that cadence. Two seconds down for the eccentric, pause for a second, and then two seconds to bring it back up for the concentric. They'll, uh, again, put those chest muscles under a lot of tension, which is what you want, and it'll also keep it safe for you. That'll work mostly the sternal head, a little bit of the uh, clavicular, a little bit of the costal, but mainly the sternal head. If we wanna target the clavicular head, more the upper portion of our chest muscles, we need to change the position of our bench. Remember what I said, we have to change the position of our shoulders to put different muscles in uh, stretch and lax positions. Well, when you work with dumbbells, you still have to keep those dumbbells perpendicular to the floor. So the best way to um, you know, 
change things is to change the position of your torso with the bench itself. So I'm just gonna raise this up just a little bit. Now again, uh, depending on your bench, it could probably go with different angles. Choose an angle that you feel is best for you. Um, I know there's a lot of debate which angle is best. I tell people, vary it up, all right? If you've had a certain angle for a long period of time, bring it up a little bit uh, to stress things a little bit further. If you've had it a little higher, you know, kind of that 60 degree range, bring it down to 45. Um, there's no right or wrong. It's just changing it up on occasion so that you can keep your muscles guessing. The motion for the bench press is pretty much the same as the standard flat bench. We're still pushing straight up to the ceiling, bringing it down uh, to our chest, kind of in that, again, triangle pattern. That two seconds up, two seconds down with the pause. Again, bring in the weights. Again, bring them straight up and together, not clanging them together. Two seconds to bring it down with the pause. And about two seconds to bring it up. Again, takes out all the momentum. I know you may not be able to lift as heavy doing this, but trust me, after lifting for as many years as I have, Nothing good comes from ego lifting. Usually all it gets you is injured. So again, I keep on reemphasizing the speed, the cadence for the bench press. Um, remember, your shoulders are um, joints that have the most degrees of freedom in the body, which also makes them more vulnerable, susceptible to injury. So by going fast or... Um, by using more of a ballistic type movement pattern, you really set yourself up for injury. And it could be, you know, surgical type injury um, if, you know, conservative methods don't take care of it. So there's the incline. So again, now work more of these sternal heads. There's this other area, kind of the costal area or abdominal head, um, some people will call it. In order to hit that a little bit more, what you can do is put the bench all the way down into a decline position, all right? I know not all benches can do that. If you are looking for a bench yourself and that interests you, you know, again, I'd like to have options. So that's why I chose this one over some more expensive ones as some expensive ones don't go into decline. They only go standard or into incline. I'm just gonna switch this all the way down. And once you get a bench, guys, you can keep that bench forever if you get a decent one because I've had this thing for 20 years now at this point. So the motion with the bench, guess what? Pretty much the same as the incline and the standard, all right? So two, one, two for the, your uh, cadence, bringing it down to the chest in that triangle pattern and then back up to the ceiling. Hopefully I don't come out of shot too much here. There we go. So again, starting at my chest, straight up to the ceiling. The, uh, one of the big things that tends to happen to people with this is they start to bring the weight back towards their head. Keep it straight up to the ceiling, down, and then back up. Don't forget to breathe. Do not hold your breath. I've seen people when they hold their breath pass out and when you have those weights over your head and you pass out, that will hurt. Very good. I'm just gonna bring the bench up here one notch. Oops. There we go. The last exercise to consider um, for your chest, if you're not able to do a decline bench, this may be another um, option for you. It's not gonna get the costal or the, um, yeah, the costal abdominal head as much. It's gonna focus really on the inner portion of that sternal head and the clavicular head, but it's a nice, nice one to be doing, especially to finish up your chest routine. It's what's called a coffin press. Keeping the weights close together. Usually I do it um, in a flat bench position, but it doesn't mean you can't do it in an incline position and it's bringing the weights straight down, scraping your elbows against your sides and straight up overhead then. That same cadence, two seconds down, pause for a second, two seconds back up. All right, so here we go. Bringing it down again, starting off with those weights straight together. And then bring them straight up. And when you bring them all the way up, you're gonna feel that squeeze in the middle. And when I come down, I am not resting them on my chest. They're staying just a little off to keep that constant tension on the chest musculature. 
but I'm gonna keep my elbows as close to my sides as I can. And there you have it. Well, let me just come on a little bit closer here. So, so those are three, four exercises you can consider for your chest routine. It's usually a good idea if you're doing the typical bro split, um, two body parts in a workout session, to do three or four um, exercises per body part. I personally do three exercises. I do four sets. And for me, with what I'm doing, I'm not doing really a classic bodybuilding or powerlifting. I'm doing what's kind of considered a hybrid of a power building. So depending on the exercise, my rep range will change, will be different. Some are three to five, some are eight to 12, some are 12 to 15, depending on the exercise itself and what I'm trying to accomplish. So I have a little bit of everything in mind, but if you're just starting, pick a rep range and go with it. All right, again, eight to 12 is a great rep range to start with. The key, intensity, you want to make sure that you fail between your rep range. Not that you stop, that your, your body can't do any more. You physically cannot do any more. Then you know you have the right intensity. You're going to get that physiologic effect that you're looking for. So thanks a lot for joining today. I hope you got a little bit out of this. I'll be back next week with a little bit more. And again, as we always say at the end of these, struggle is strength. All right. You're going to have to struggle to get that strength, not just uh, for your body, but also for your mind as well. So get your struggle on and I hope to see you next week. Take care.